Good afternoon, Parkway family and friends. I hope that you are doing well. And uh, we thank you for kind of joining us for this midweek time of encouragement, information, and maybe devotion time. I want to give a shout out to Marcia Ball and her hospitality team and many volunteers who have, for the past 10 weeks, including this Wednesday night, uh, prepared meals so that we might be able to pick those up or those might be delivered. We've delivered those to many of our uh, widows and many of our senior adults, anybody from church members to the community have been able to come by and we've even taken some uh, just about every week we've gone to a housing authority up here on Dean Road as well as other places in the community and we're so thankful for those who have volunteered their time in order to be able to do this it has been a great outreach effort and I believe it has shown great love uh, for the community and uh, love for our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. This today will be our last time to be able to do that. We'll kind of take a break for the summer. And uh, while we have been uh, preparing many meals, as a matter of fact, in my estimation, there have been prepared somewhere between 3,000 and 4,000 meals uh, over the past nine weeks. And today, doing more than we've done uh, uh, each week, but uh, today we're grilling 500 hamburgers, uh, kind of in hopes that even more of the community might be able to come out. And uh, so those will be ready at 5 o'clock today if you're watching this before 5 and, or even before 6 o'clock. Feel free to come. Even if you don't have reservations, you come on. We will uh, have plenty. And we've been passing out not only meals, but we've been also have been passing out children activity uh, sheets and kits. And uh, so our children and uh, others in the community have been able to enjoy those. And they've been able to learn Bible stories as well as have many things uh, to be able to do. But uh, on Wednesday, June 3rd, two weeks from today, on that Wednesday from 6 to 7, we're going to have a family-friendly Bible study. All ages are invited to come to here into the sanctuary. And as part of that Bible study, we're going to be showing every week uh, some of my favorite Andy Griffith episodes and matching those with some of my favorite Bible verses and Bible stories. We're going to be learning, hopefully maybe some of the lessons in the Andy Griffith Show are using that as illustrations so that we might be able to study uh, God's Word. Some of you have heard of Andy Griffith Bible studies before. We're going to do a similar kind of thing. And uh, maybe if uh, some of the people in your house or some of the younger generation in our church are not quite familiar with the Andy Griffith Show, well, now's a good time. But I want you to be assured that what we're doing uh, Bible uh, studies and Jesus will be central to all that we do. We're just using those Andy Griffith episodes, some of those, so that uh, uh, maybe as a kickoff or illustration for some of the things that we're going to be talking about. My hope is to provide a place to where you can come, beginning June 3rd, Wednesday night, be a part of a Bible study where you can be physically safe, uh, to where you can feel comfortable and continue, of course, to be able to help us to grow spiritually. And, and uh, so we want to encourage you to do that. In fact, it's my goal. If you don't feel comfortable on June 3rd, that's okay. We still hope to live stream this on Wednesday night. But uh, that maybe by the end of the summer, uh, you might feel comfortable enough to come. Hope that things not only, uh, are, of course, continue to be well here at the church, but also in our community and around the world. And so we hope good things and look forward to things being better. Uh, in the days to come. I, I'm still encouraging online viewing for our Sunday worship uh, this Sunday. Uh, however, if you'd like to come, you know that you can come. We started having people in this past week, and uh, this Sunday, pretty much the same guidelines. We encourage you to come. Uh, in fact, we encourage you to register. If you register, we'll have a reserved seat, so you can come. We'll know where you're sitting, and we'll take you directly to your spot so that you can say stay socially distant uh, from everyone else but still be able to worship uh, with others. Uh, we still take walk-ins and guests, so if you haven't registered, you get up on Sunday morning, you decide to come, you come on, we'll have room for you. We'll still, we've got three or four overflow rooms just in case. Uh, we need those for uh, room or if you feel like you need to leave out of the sanctuary or maybe take a child, you can do that. You can go to one of the rooms and uh, there'll be monitors on so that you can continue to worship as well. So hopefully, I think with this video, there's also our guidelines will be sent out again 
and we're still going to have people entering from the front and exiting out the side, so we'll be kind of one-way traffic. <laughs> the exception would be that if uh, you need handicap accessible or you need a ramp in order to be able to get to the sanctuary, we'll have our uh, greeters there for you. I've been asked, is there going to be, or do you have to wear a mask? And you do not have to wear a mask. I would say less than half wore masks, but we're encouraging our greeters to wear masks again this week. Maybe some changes here in the future, but uh, uh, we would encourage uh, our, only our greeters to wear masks. And you wear a mask if you if you would like to. Uh, you don't have to in order to be able to come to worship service. But we do have masks here if you'd like some. Some of those disposable masks, we have those. If you come, you feel like you need to and want to wear one, uh, you certainly can do that. The bathrooms will still be closed, uh, except for emergencies and uh, many other things that we're doing. We won't be handing out bulletins. Uh, offering plates will only be at the door. If you want to use an offering plate, so we're not going to do any of those things. And hopefully this will help us to be assured. There may be some changes that will be coming back in the next few weeks. Some of those may have to do with uh, offering child care, uh, Probably will start handing out bulletins here in the next two or three weeks if we continue all things continue to go well. So there may be some of those changes that take place, but we're we're going to continue to uh, leave our sanctuary socially uh, distant so that uh, we might at least be six feet or more uh, from everyone, but being able to be able to enjoy worship together. The biggest change this week is that uh, the worship. Music for worship will be live. First time in 10 weeks, we're going to have live music for worship. Can't stand it. Looking forward to it. However, a great thank you, a wonderful, great job that our uh, that Aaron and our praise team have done over the past few weeks. We appreciate the work and effort that they have put in so that we might be able to continue our worshiping together as Parkway, even though we've been apart. And uh, so we look forward to live music uh, this week as a part of our worship. And look forward to you joining us either, and if not present here, then online. And we're encouraging certainly for all Parkway members to join us online. If you're traveling, Memorial Day weekend, some are starting to travel. If you're going to be traveling this weekend, well, you know what to do. Tune in with us at 10 o'clock and come on and be a part of that live stream as well. Uh, some of our Sunday school classes are continuing to meet by Zoom. We have others who actually are beginning to uh, meet together or see how they can do that. And we uh, give you that opportunity here. You can have Sunday school anytime uh, during the week. You can't have it even on Sunday. We don't have a particular time on Sunday where we're going to say everybody has Sunday school. But you can pick a time and so that we might put you in a large room. You can meet here in the sanctuary. We have several large rooms so that you might be able to say apart and feel comfortable if you'd like to do that. We would encourage you that if your Sunday school class is doing that, would you please let the church office know so that we can coordinate, sanitize the room, have that ready for you when you come in. If we need to do any of the arranging of chairs uh, or that sort of thing, we certainly can do that uh, as well. Uh, I, I want to share with you a couple of verses uh, from Second, excuse me, First Peter chapter two, verses five and six. First Peter two, five and six like to find those first, feel free to hit pause if you need a moment, maybe to be able to find, read along, or you can just listen carefully. First Peter chapter 2 and verse 5 says this, you yourselves like living stones are being built up as a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For it stands in scripture, behold, I am laying in Zion a stone, a cornerstone, Chosen and precious, and whoever believes in him will not be put to shame. Well, it's pretty obvious who the cornerstone is, isn't it? It's our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Zion is the place in Jerusalem, and we know that Jesus Christ sacrificed for us. He gave his life uh, for us on the cross in Jerusalem. Three days later, he rose again. But the first verse we read, verse 5, talks about living stones. He says, but you as living stones... Talking about plural, it's talking about all of us as living stones, all those who are believers in the Lord Jesus, those who make up the body of Christ. So you notice that it's plural. Christ is the cornerstone, and we are the ones who are the living stones that are being built upon Christ so that we might be able to make up that body of Christ. And 
We know that sometimes in the Bible it's our very own bodies that are called the temple of God, and houses the Holy Spirit. But here it's talking about living stones. It's a great picture that is painted here. And I want you to notice as we talk about it, it's a picture of unity, that we are each finding our place uh, in the building of the body of Christ and the building of the kingdom and encouraging others to come and join in to be part of the living stones so that they might be able to know Christ as well. We as Parkway Baptist Church, we want to be a picture of unity as well. Well, we're called here in verse 5, a holy priesthood. And we're called that because we now have access to the throne of God. We have access to the Heavenly Father because of what Jesus Christ has done for us on the cross. And uh, what do we think and what do we what do priests do in the Old Testament? Well, we know that they offered sacrifice. I mean, they offered some animals as sacrifices. And now the Bible says as priests that we are to offer living, or excuse me, offer spiritual sacrifices as well. Well, when we offer spiritual sacrifice, we know that that does not assure or give us salvation. Jesus did the only thing that was necessary, and he is the only one, and only through his sacrifice are we able to have salvation. The spiritual sacrifices that we are able to offer, well, that doesn't even help us in salvation. But it's because of what Jesus Christ has done for us that we want to offer spiritual sacrifices. Some time back, I was... Uh, renewing my driver's license. I was waiting, and there was a young boy in front of me, and uh, I guess he was maybe getting his live driver's license for the first time. And the employee, or the lady, was kind of going through a checklist and asking questions. And so she got to the question, she said, do you want to be an organ donor? Well, the boy paused and kind of turned white, like he wasn't sure about that question. He wasn't sure maybe what that meant. And I was close enough to him, I guess, to where I could lean in. And I said, it doesn't mean you've got to give all of your organs right now. Let me ask you, when we talk about spiritual sacrifices, does that make you anxious? Does that give you any fear of what that might require? I uh, sat down with our staff in one of our prayer times this week, and I read these verses, and I asked them, I said, help me to understand what do you think it means by a spiritual sacrifice? Can you give me an example of what exactly that is? They gave several things to other sources. I've kind of come up with six items or six categories of spiritual sacrifices. I'm just going to give you that list of six. Maybe that'll be able to help us to what it means, how we can build up that spiritual house by offering these spiritual sacrifices. The first one is this. Anything that we do for Jesus in our bodies, good deeds, ministries, or, uh, how we minister in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. You might remember the Paul wrote in Romans 12, he said, offer your bodies as living sacrifice. So anything that we do uh, under, we do with our own bodies, I believe, also is a sacrifice as well. Number two is praise is a sweet sacrifice. Praise and worship. In other words, we're giving tribute to God and not to ourselves. Number three is obedience. Obedience, following God's word, doing those things that we know that are right and those things we know that are best, morally, ethically, biblically. These are the things that set us apart from the rest of the world. Number four, resources. Well, there it is. Those things that we own, whether it be our house or our car or bank account, whatever it is, we want to give all of our resources, turn all those, all those over to the Lord Jesus and use them in a way that is, that is pleasing to Him, and it's part of our tithing and part of our gifts as well. Number five is sharing Christ with others. Is a spiritual sacrifice. We are called to share the love of Jesus with others. And then number six, sacrificing our own ideas, comforts, and desires for the good of others. That's a sacrifice, and it should be that which makes us more like Jesus, that we would be willing to put our own desires, sometimes our own comforts, sometimes even our own safety aside, so that we might be able to help others, or that we might be able to help the cause of Christ. I hope this has been a help to you to understand what it means to be a living stone and what it means perhaps to understand what the Bible talks about spiritual or living sacrifice. But as we read this passage, we reminds us to be thankful for the sacrifice that Jesus willingly gave for us on the cross so that we might be able to have new life and eternal life. 
And it's because of that that we want to be willing participants in offering spiritual sacrifices for Him and for the benefit of others as well. We want to be living stone so that we might be able to, whether it's because of this pandemic or because we're seeking to follow Him, we always want to be looking for opening more doors to share the gospel. We want to be able to grow in our faith and we want to be more Christ-like in everything that we do. And I believe that regardless of what we're going through or maybe even because of what we're going through with the pandemic and now we're moving forward, uh, that these things will occur. I want you to know that I pray for you often. pray for our church and our congregation. I want to pray for you now. Lord Jesus, Thank you for the living sacrifice that you gave for each one of us. We pray, Father, that we might be willing to offer spiritual sacrifices so that we might be built up as the living stones and the spiritual house that you would have us to be. Father, we pray for our congregation. We pray for our community. Father, we pray that you, we might be able to be uh, pointing others toward the Lord Jesus in everything that we do and say. Protect us, watch over us, keep us safe and healthy. And Father, we pray that we'll look forward and that we might be able to be together soon. It's in Christ's name we look these prayers. Amen.